So, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a bit weird for me to, to be here. Uh, I'm a Google developer expert for web technologies uh, with a specialization on uh, Polymer. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I founded uh, Milan.js, that is the uh, largest JavaScript community in Italy so far. And I'm the organizer of JS Girls. JS Girls is uh, an event that try to engage more women in uh, JavaScript development. Uh, in my spare time, I work uh, in uh, Accenture uh, as a manager. Um, I'm in charge uh, of the front-end development uh, team. So, as you may notice, I'm not uh, an Android developer. I'm a web developer. I'm a front-end developer. So, this talk is not going to be like, uh, you know, web versus native, I'm better than you, you will lose your job soon, uh, or stuff like that. Instead, I will adjust to, to share with you uh, some technology, some feature I'm really excited about, uh, because I think Progressive Web App are really cool. So, uh, the, the main reason I'm here is because Progressive Web App has been defined lately like the most exciting things that happened to the web since Ajax. That's impressive, isn't it? I say that, but okay. So, I bet anyone here have heard about Progressive Web App, but who really knows what Progressive Web App are? So, let's try together to, to see what the feature uh, Progressive Web App offers to the, to the web. So, first of all, we have the offline support. This means also instant loading, in some cases, uh, in our uh, web app. We have push notifications. So, we are able in uh, our web app to intercept notification and to display the payload to, to the user. We have background sync. Background sync means uh, I can do some action when I'm offline, and I can finish this action when I go back online again. And last but not least, I have the opportunity to add my app icon to my home screen. And there is more and more uh, feature uh, coming to uh, under the umbrella of uh, progressive apps. So, as a brief aside, when I write uh, uh, slides for, uh, for my talk, I always try to put myself uh, on uh, my attendees' shoes. So I try to image the reaction they will have uh, with some slides uh, and uh, the thing I'm, I'm saying. So the first time I wrote a slide like that, it was for a JavaScript conference like two years ago, yeah, more or less. So I try to imagine the, the, the reaction of my audience. Yeah, I imagine something like this. Well, my prediction was pretty accurate because people were really amazed by those features. But I know today is different because most of you are uh, mobile developer, Android developer. So the reaction I imagined was something like this. So, I know, I know, I know you all uh, know what uh, push notifications are, what uh, means to work offline or to have a background sync, uh, or even what uh, it's like to add your app, uh, your icon app uh, on the home screen. So, nothing new, nothing new for, for you, maybe, but uh, it's new for the web. So, if you talk about uh, progressive web app, we should talk about Service Worker. Service Worker is the main feature, the core feature behind Progressive Web App. This is the enabler of uh, a lot of features like offline navigation, like push notification, and other cool stuff. So, how Service Worker works? So, so a Service Worker is like uh, a sort of proxy between the client and the server Actually, this light is not pretty accurate because the service worker resides in the client, so it uh, lives in your browser. 
So uh, since um, service worker is a, a sort of proxy, of course, this uh, can be, you know, a man in the middle fast. So service worker works only on secure connection. So you have to uh, serve your website uh, through HTTPS to use service worker. Another cool thing is that service worker works in a separate thread. So we all know JavaScript is a single thread. So we are not talking about multi-threading, but actually the service worker works lives in another thread. JavaScript remains single thread just because the service worker do something different uh, compared to what we, we do in the main thread. So for example, service worker can't access the DOM. So I can't uh, in any way uh, select, manipulate or traverse the DOM. But I can communicate with my main thread. So the service worker API is really a neat API. So if you are familiar with events uh, and promises, you're good to go. Let's see uh, some code. So the first things I need to do to use service worker is go in my main.js file, so in my bundle file in my uh, main.js, and uh, use the navigator uh, object, that is a global object uh, in uh, Windows, and use the service worker property and call the register method on it and pass as an argument the file, so the path of my service worker file. The service worker file should be a separate file. So I just need that to activate to install my uh, service worker. But since we are a good developer, uh, we all know service worker are not available in all the browser. So we need to wrap our registration in a condition. So we are trying to detect if the service worker feature is present in uh, our browser, uh, checking if uh, the service worker properties is inside the navigator uh, object. The uh, registration of the service worker returns a promise. So I can do something if my promise is uh, fulfilled, or I try, I can catch the error if something uh, go wrong. So after the registration, the thing I, I need to, to do is to listen to the first event, that is the install event. And in this event, I can do stuff. We will see uh, what in, uh, in a moment. So for example, I can leverage the new cache API, we will see. And I create a new cache, so I just uh, give a name um, or at my cache, and I specify an array of strings that contains all the resources I want to cache. We are talking about pre-caching in, uh, in this case. So let's go back to our install event. I use wait until. Wait until is a method uh, in my event object, and uh, it will make sure that the operation we will do inside the installation process uh, has done. So we use the cache um, global object, and we open our cache with a given name. And then, if the uh, promise uh, is fulfilled, we can just add all our files, so our array of uh, strings, to our cache. After that, we need to, to use this cache if you want to work offline and if you uh, want to um, have an instant uh, loading of uh, our app. So uh, in this uh, case, uh, we listen to the fetch event and we have the opportunity to respond with something. In the response with method, I can put what I want. I can put uh, just a string. I can put uh, HTML, static HTML. I can uh, use a static file I have on my file system, or in this case, I can use my cache. So the first thing I am doing here 
is try to guess uh, if the request uh, the browser just do just did is the same exactly uh, for the, the resources I have in, in my cache. So I try to match the request from the user and the file I have uh, in uh, my cache. Then, since this return a promise, I can just uh, return uh, the file for the, for, um, from the cache if there is a match. Otherwise, I invoke the fetch function and I just forward the request the user just did. So let's talk about uh, the cache API. Most people are confused about uh, this, uh, this new implementation because all the people, when uh, we, we talk about cache, uh, think about the browser cache. But the cache API is a new API, is mm, brand new, and is totally different uh, uh, from the browser API. So we all know the browser API, how it works. So I have some file cached on, um, on my computer, but when I do the request, I request a page, <coughs> there is a round trip between the client and the server to check if the files I, re I um, requested are the same I have cached on my computer. So this sometimes takes time. The connection is low, uh, the server is uh, overloaded, so it's not responding, uh, etc. So uh, even though I have my file on my computer, sometimes it takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds to um, serve my file. So the cache API is totally different because we don't need to interact with the server to check if the file uh, the user requests are the same in the cache because the service worker have the ability to intercept all the requests. So I know what the user just requested and I know what uh, is inside the, the cache. So I can check for, for a match and I can respond with the file already in the cache. So this means we can go offline and uh, serve the page and we have a instant loading. So another cool thing for the web, is pretty new for the web, is not new for uh, a mobile developer, are push notifications. Well, if the... Um, the code, the API for the service worker is really neat, is really clean, is easy to understand. The push notification part is a bit more verbose. So I suggest you to use uh, Firebase Close Messaging. You may uh, already know what Firebase do. Uh, Firebase allow uh, to, to use the Firebase service to send push notifications so we don't have to implement the backend part of the push notification. And uh, uh, Firebase offers uh, uh, a hosting as well and is HTTPS uh, by default, so it's perfect for progressive web apps. Let's see how it works. So on my JavaScript file, I just need to initialize my app with all the ID and key I can get from the um, the panel uh, of uh, my Firebase project. Uh, then I need to request to the user the permission. You know that uh, push notifications on the web is like geolocalization and other HTML5 um, feature needs the, uh, the permission from the user. So the first uh, thing you need to do is request the permission to the user. If the, the user grant uh, the permission, we can generate a token that is used to send the messages from uh, the backend. After that, what I'm doing here is try to intercept the payload of the message uh, coming from the server. And in this case, I want to uh, use uh, the payload just to print uh, a message in the console. But uh, the on message method is really helpful, is really um, handful because I can uh, uh, grab the payload, uh, I can use it in a different way. So I can, let's see, uh, show a toaster 
or uh, a part of the UI that is more integrated with my website instead of the classic uh, push notification uh, notification. But if you uh, want to intercept uh, the, the messages in the background, since uh, you can intercept these messages also when you are offline or when the, the tab of the browser is not, uh, um, is not open, you can intercept the message. So you should um, initialize the, the app on the service worker as well. And then with the set background message handler, you can intercept uh, uh, the, the notification and show the classic uh, uh, notification uh, with all the call to action and stuff like that. So, to get a more native like uh, you know, uh, experience, we can add the icon of uh, our uh, uh, progressive app uh, to our home screen. This is due. Uh, through the uh, web manifest, that is a simple JSON file with uh, a couple of uh, properties, uh, nothing fancy. So I declare the name, the short name of my application, the team color, the background color. I can decide how to display my progressive web app. I can display in the browser, but this makes not uh, much sense. I can display as a standalone or uh, as a full screen app. And of course, I can uh, show the user some fancy icon uh, on the home screen, but also on the splash screen uh, that will trigger when I tap on the icon. So this is the icon of Twitter Lite. Twitter Lite is uh, the PWE version of the Twitter app. Uh, the size of the Twitter Lite uh, application is like 700 keep, so it's pretty small. And uh, you can spot the difference. So actually, uh, add home screen was the old name of this feature uh, because uh, uh, the icon was added in the past to the, your home screen. But today in uh, Android, the app will be added to your app tab. So uh, the experience is way better. So there is a lot of tools that will help you with the uh, progressive web app development. Uh, first of all, the Chrome Dev tool. So if you open your Chrome Dev tool, there is a tab called Application. In this tab, you can uh, find all the information about your running service worker. This uh, little option, Update in a Road, uh, is a lifesaver because uh, uh, the service worker uh, don't refresh just if you reload the page. You need to navigate or uh, close the tab and go back to your application to uh, let the service worker update. So uh, this is not handy when you are developing the, your application. So you can just check the update and reload and uh, have a, a nicer experience. On the right side, you have a lot of options you can trigger directly from uh, your dev tool. Uh, these are really handy. If you check the left side, you can get the information about the manifest with all the icons. Uh, we can, uh, you can get the, the information uh, also about the cache storage, so the new cache API. You can see all the version of your cache, what's inside, so it's really, really cool. Another cool tool is Workbox. Workbox uh, is a small library um, built on top of this uh, standard. Workbox helps you with uh, the different caching strategy uh, you can use in uh, your application. It's pretty simple. Uh, simple. Uh, if you use Express, Node Express in the past is really similar, so you just need to instantiate a workbox, and then you can register a route, and for a given route, you can use a different cache strategy, so it's really, really simple to, to use. Lighthouse is also a Google tool, is inside um, the dev tools in the audit tab, and what you can do here is check a variety of, uh, of features, so we, we uh, can run some audits on performance, on best practice, uh, etc. But uh, 
uh, we are interested on the progressive web part. So if you are curious about your application, is your application is a progressive web app or not, you just need to run this tool. So browser support. This is always a pain part, uh, and this is a slide uh, where I make joke about Microsoft, but in this case, I can do that because uh, Edge is releasing a uh, good support uh, for progressive web app, uh, and in specific, uh, they will release a support for web manifest, service worker, uh, push notification, so this is really cool. Chrome, we all know, it supports all the all the feature, Opera shares the same um, engine, so it's uh, easy. Microsoft, um, uh, Firefox with Mozilla, uh, they uh, actually uh, support uh, almost all the, the specification. And the real pain point is Safari. Maybe some of you know that uh, Safari implemented the, the, the support for the service worker uh, last week, but there are some limitations. First of all, the, there is a limit on uh, what you can cache, the, the size on, the, on the, your cache. And this is, I think, the, the worst part. After a few weeks, if you uh, don't visit the, the application, if you don't run the application, uh, iOS can just delete your cache. This means that after a couple of weeks, if I click on the icon and I expect uh, uh, offline experience, maybe I will be wrong. There is no background seeing support. I don't know if they will ever support that. And there's not push notification. This is because uh, uh, Apple already have uh, their you know, uh, push notification system. It's not a standard, but they are still using it. So. Let's see. And at home screen is possible, but is a mess. First of all, you need three tabs just to add uh, the icon, and it's kind of hidden, so it's not easy. So progressive web apps are not just mobile. So if someone asks you to uh, build a progressive web app just for mobile, it doesn't make any sense because uh, the, the starting point for a progressive web app is a normal website, a responsive website, uh, where you can uh, build on top on that uh, the, the new specification and uh, uh, get a progressive web app. So, but there is more because Windows uh, last week just released the first progressive web app in uh, the desktop store. So you can have a progressive web app like desktop app uh, in Windows 10, and this is pretty cool. So progressive web app, you can love them, you can hate them, but for sure you will never ever able to escape the Atwood love. Any application that can be written in JavaScript will be eventually written in JavaScript. Thank you very much. <laughs>